Make no attempt to reload your device. You are now entering the hell hole. Welcome back to the hellhole. It's your old pal back in the desert. Looking for more Dakar Desert Rally. This is the last track that I'm yet to complete. Tonight we're going to try to find out all things going well. All things willing. We're going to find out if this will unlock more tracks, more of the map. I don't know how unlocking works. Information is a little bit just a little bit hard to come by granted i haven't looked thoroughly but hey why why find out when i can just do it myself feeling a little bit rough so we'll see how long we go this is a full eight stage extreme rally event we are playing in sport mode i gave professional a little bit of a try off stream that was pretty ugly i don't know if i'll do that on stream and I'm trying out the new car. I got the I got the hot tip from Lord West 111. You can see all that at the end of the last session, which is in the archive now. And it should still be in the Twitch VOD if you're watching in the next couple of days. I am Internet Racing Sensation Mig Lucifer, and this is what I do now. I just I just play Dakar Desert Rally all day, every day. It's not, it's not entirely true, but we'll see how many stages we can do. Feeling a little bit rough. Hopefully we'll get through it. <sighs> I am in black. The more popular of the Miglusive variants. I don't even know where I'm going with that. We're going to try to abstain from discussing superhero movies tonight. Uh, do we even want to go there? I don't know. We'll see. It's stage one of Yanbu 2021. Presumably inspired by the real event a couple of years ago. My rolling start has failed. I don't know why that happens. I don't know if that's something I'm doing wrong, or if it's just the game is weird. You're supposed to get a rolling start. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. I don't know what is causing that. I'm going to try to have a good race here. This car is interesting. It feels pretty good. It handles well. But I don't feel I'm getting the same... Uh, the same lead that I had with the other car, so I don't know because it seems like the speed is actually the speeds it reaches are similar. Uh, I did a couple of the races off stream. This is the last race left to do. We'll see how we go. 
I'm very keen to see if this will open up more of the map and open up more of the free roam areas. Because I, I now, I'm now very confident that there are more. Are those other races? Oh no! This 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 car feels very much an improvement in some ways, but I'm just not convinced. Feels like it handles a little bit better, but I wonder, it might not be as... Might not speed up quite as quick. I don't know about acceleration, about speed. We're going to see how we do. If we can catch this guy, it's a good vote for this car. Here we go. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. Well. I mean, that's on me, really. No matter how good the car is, if you're not driving it right, it's not going to go well for you. That's what we've learned. Sometimes I, I just want to lead foot it, and that's not the right way to go. It's only slowing me down in the long run. So are we going to talk about movies tonight? I don't know. I came away from uh, from the Super Bowl halftime trailers feeling despondent. Feeling that the hope of 2023 was kind of sucked out of the room. There is still hope. But, uh, I don't know. I, I was not encouraged. The Flash is basically everything that's contemptible in cinema right now. Two kilometers. Prepare to turn right. Danger one. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. Indiana Jones, maybe. Maybe there's something there. I'm not convinced entirely, but there's potential. And uh, I like the thought of seeing somebody punch Nazis on screen again. It feels like that's been uh, overdue. feels like... A good time for Nazis to be getting smacked about on screen again. They are the evergreen American villains, pop culture villains, Western villains, I don't know. Pulp villains, comic villains. It still it still boggles my mind that Nazis haven't factored into very many comic book things, particularly Captain America. That's the one that... I mean, I, there's plenty of access to grind with Disney and Marvel Studios and Captain America not fighting Nazis. That's one of them. That was a little bit mind-boggling. I don't know what they were thinking. So, Indiana Jones fighting Nazis again. I mean, it's not what I needed from Indiana Jones, particularly an Indiana Jones set so many decades removed from the Second World War, but I'll take it. I'll take it, particularly if it's a good adventure. Remains to be seen. I mean, the, the key to Indiana Jones and maybe the big risk of Indiana Jones is uh, it's got to be good. It's got to be consistent without being redundant. We don't want to see, like, what happened to Star Wars where it just felt that, that Episode 7 was, was redundant and uninteresting and small. And then, and then they went kind of off the rails. I don't know. We'll see. At least there's potential there. I feel like air... just looks like a big commercial. You know, it reminds me of sort of like the celebrity commercials they do for the, the halftime show, the Super Bowl. Get in some celebrities, you know, get them to do something you recognize. Pair up a brand. It feels like Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, okay, they're back. They're going to do some sort of, like, late 80s, early 90s shtick in what looks like a, a feature-length commercial for Nike. 
I don't get it. Is that is that something anyone wants to see? Like, you know, that's that's kind of that's kind of my sweet spot for basketball. You know, I love Michael Jordan. He's there in the trailer. Looks like it's it's a Jordan story as much as it is the Air Air Jordan shoe story. He's integral to it. But I don't know. I don't know. Just uh, maybe give me a good like half hour documentary on the show on the shoe and how the shoe was made. I don't know that it's a film feature film we'll see maybe they prove us wrong matt damon and ben affleck they're capable i don't know i i got a lot more faith in ben affleck being in the air film than i do the flash because the flash just looks like uh it's it's the crap i didn't like about the dc extended universe movies with like the reminder of things that i used to like and the takeaway from the flash movie is really like let's just watch batman 89 and batman returns because that that that's what i enjoyed that was the, those are decent movies those are good movies could not care less about the flash just looks like a pile of crap it was a mistake to ever tell the suits and the normies about the concept of a multiverse because all it has been is an excuse to just splatter all over the screen nonsensical hodgepodges of, of things we know and things we shouldn't care about. It's a massive detriment to what's new and it's it's just it's a fleeting value. It's it's very disappointing. Get this out of the way and then we'll see what DC can do when they're serious. When they're, tr- when they're really trying to invest in something here and now. And it's just miserable I mean, like anything, you know, nothing can just be what it is. I made the joke earlier to someone that like, you can't, you can't film a cow. You got to paint a horse. You want to, you want a horse. You got to take a bunch of cats together. Kind of like the Simpsons joke. That's been the approach creatively to so many of these things where it can't just be the thing that we're licensing. We got to make it something else. It's just absurd. So the Flash movie, you know, it's not even about the Flash. It's a, all the promotion is Batman. And that's the Danger Batman three. from 1989. We got, we got, uh, we got Harrison Ford being CG youthed up one. to be 1989 Harrison Ford. Shades of Last Crusade. Warren Beatty did some sort of insane cosplay reaction video TV special for Dick Tracy kind of played like something you'd watch in 1989 in anticipation of the movie assuming assuming they did that kind of thing that early I, I don't really remember Dick Tracy was a big one for me I was very excited for Dick Tracy I obviously you know I, I was I was head over heels for Batman 89 that was exciting too Dick Tracy <laughs> I, I had like my first major operation in 1990 and I got a Dick Tracy puzzle <laughs> so, I, I don't think I did it in the hospital but I had it maybe I did that was uh, so that's one of those like childhood memories that are nice but that's a really good film I didn't get to see it uh, immediately so it's not strictly nostalgia but uh, I consider Dick Tracy to be one of those comic book movies that are, are worth loving because it's such a singular vision and I love, I love the attempt to bring that material to life. It sort of goes its own way with the, the color palettes. But it's, uh, I, lo- I like all the makeup effects and stuff. It's just a, it's got sort of like a tricky pace. It's a little bit on the slow side. And I can understand people struggling with it at first. But if you get through that Dick Tracy movie, it's a little bit long, but it, it's very satisfying. And it's very unique and that's what I want I want unique singular things brought to the screen that I don't see everywhere else that's what I want and that's what most superhero movies aren't really delivering they're not delivering like something unto themselves I got to admit I was sort of you know I was curious about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania but 
really, the more I've heard about that, the more I've just lost all interest. Those, those Ant-Man films, like, do not give a crap about the source material. I mean, Marvel Studios in general, they are, they're just drifting further and further from comics. They don't really care. They have the luxury of being able to sort of patch things into the comics, so the, the comics themselves are not really the comics anymore, quote-unquote. Like, Hope, Hope Van Dyne exists in the comics now. She never did when the film came out. So she's a new invention. There's all these new inventions. They've, they've gone a completely different way. Modoc in name only. Kang the Conqueror is, you know, one of these sort of cast against type and I don't know where they're going with that. Maybe it's maybe connected enough to the comics that you sort of take an interest. But is it satisfying unto itself as a film? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Paul Rudd as Scott Lang's okay. I, I sort of lament the loss of all the Hank Pym quote unquote lore. It's not a word I like to use. I don't really consider lore a good thing. But uh, but I do I do have an interest in the comics and representing the material that is being licensed and adapted adequately. I don't know. I mean, you talk about casting, that's not great. I don't think Ezra, Ezra Miller was ever a very good Barry Allen. I don't know, that, that, gets, to be a, that gets to be a bit of a sticky subject because... Uh, There's interest, there's interest other than the comics themselves, and it's not necessarily a, it's not necessarily something I would consider an evil, but it's perhaps slightly misplaced. I don't know, all that stuff. Look, I just want a movie that I can watch and enjoy, and these aren't it. I'm trying to remind myself though, there is there is stuff on the horizon. Willem Dafoe and Inside, I believe, is in comes out in March. That's an interesting one. That seems like it could be a good adult contemporary film with an interesting concept, high concept, and it's it's a, a very competent actor. It's a performance-driven piece by the look of it. I would like it to be a little bit more popcorn than I think it's going to be. I look at Inside and I do think of sort of those those polished 90s sort of thrillers that are still, they're still popcorn, they're quite easy to watch. I think Inside will be a little, maybe a little bit more challenging than that, but I'm still very interested in that. That seems like a good one. I mentioned uh, in another stream, uh, I'm interested in big George Foreman. I like a bit of boxing, I like George Foreman, and that movie seems to be earnest, earnest in its efforts. I don't know if it'll be brilliant, but it could be interesting. It's uh, it's a it's a good story. Uh, some of these biopics they they veer a little too much to cosplay. Particularly the music ones have just been getting to me ridiculous. It's like we gotta we gotta assemble the the cosplay universe of music icons. You had like Elton John, Queen, and Freddie Mercury, Whitney Houston. There's been a whole heap. They're all sort of like '80s icons in the in these films. I don't know, they're all pretty weak to me, and, and the worst thing about a lot of that stuff is so much of that history was on film, you could find a better documentary that will use real footage instead of some kid in like dubious dress up. So I don't know. I mean, you're getting into history that some of us have lived through or were at least familiar with, so it's a little bit tedious in that regard. And you gotta give some credence to these things being good for just reintroducing that history, advancing that history, initiating younger viewers and things like that. But but really like let's not let's not ignore documentaries, docu series, just things like that. And that and that's my problem maybe with air. That seems like it would be a better subject for you know, a TV series of like great American brands or something. I mean there those kinds of shows are on. There could even be a show that has covered 
the Air Jordan shoe, which is a, a shoe like that I love and a period that I love. But do I want do I want like a cosplay film version? I at least have some faith that maybe that film will do something slightly more than these cosplay sort of movies. What is this guy doing? Yeah, driving me into the wall. Trying to talk movies here, pal. You can't just steer me into the rocks like that. Yeah, so maybe Air is is a is a little bit closer to a real movie. I do. I guess Matt Damon's there. It does make me think of Ford versus Ferrari, which was a very dry, competent movie. But like, I feel like that's typical of James Mangold. He's not a very interesting director. He will just deliver what you know the story in a linear fashion. Not a lot of frills not a lot of you know the the cinematic presentation of it is not very interesting the details are straightforward I don't know which which obviously gets me worried about Indiana Jones I keep forgetting what it's called dial of destiny or something um, yeah that concerns me because again I, I just find James Mangold to be a very bland uninteresting director you don't necessarily want a strong directorial voice for Indiana Jones. You kind of want that to reflect the style of the other films. If Spielberg's not going to do it, you know, you want somebody that can be simpatico at least. And, and the trailer gives the impression that maybe that's been done competently, but I don't, I don't expect it to be like a great film necessarily. I don't know. We'll see. Hard to gauge Indy right now. But... I don't know. Yeah. Some some of these things give me more hope than others, and we're just crossing our fingers for now. Inside is sort of like the the wild card that has the most potential to to be thrilling, something new and exciting. Don't know if it can deliver because it does have that sort of challenging edge, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm curious about Scream Six. I lo I love. You know, I, I love the first couple of Scream films. I enjoyed Scream 3. I, I've i spoken before during these streams that I felt Scream 4 was a massive disappointment, and I still haven't seen the fifth one, but 6 has potential. Hopefully it delivers. I don't know that I'm looking for these franchise installments to really be the torchbearers for cinema right now, for movies. I mean, I say cinema. I, oh, I mean, I'm very much... I keep describing it as, like, I'm in a sweatpants phase. I just want to watch things that I like and enjoy. I don't want to be steeped in nostalgia. I just want a good time and to enjoy it. And unfortunately, I'm getting that from things that are in the past, that are old. Uh, we'll see if that changes. Creed 3, that's another one that's like, it's franchise, but it looks interesting. And that's the Jonathan Majors performance that I'm excited about. That guy's looking like off the charts, jacked, and I'm getting like Club of Lang vibes in that he's this big threat, kind of like Rocky 3. It's, he's sort of like, it's sort of the Rocky 3, it's Creed 3. There's sort of like a a little bit of a an analogous quality there with this big looming threat that's real hung, he's real hungry interesting that he sort of has a shared history with Creed, with Adonis Creed, so that's that's cool. And I like I like that they're doing a new character, they're not bringing back like a kid of, it's not Club of Lang's kid as far as I know. Uh, it's probably better if he doesn't have any relationship to Club of Lang. You know, I don't think they need Clubber to be training him or anything like that. You know, if this guy can just be a, a whole new challenge for Adonis Creed. For Adonis Creed to forge his own path, have his own opponent, develop his own rival. It's not just a throwback thing. That that That's going to be real cool. And I feel like it, those trailers make it seem like, you know, Jonathan Majors is going to make that happen. I like that. I got mixed feelings about his Kang, but I'm digging what's happening in Creed. That's a good one. So it's funny that there's like a couple of boxing pictures coming. Which is sort of like an old Hollywood staple, the boxing movie. So it's sort of 
interesting to see them back but in you know they always feel they, they manage to feel fresh like even through the rocky movies you're not thinking of like 1930s 1940s boxing movies even if they're kind of like it is the update of the staple so i'm i'm looking i'm looking forward to that a little bit i don't know I, I've, I've got mixed feelings about the previous creeds particularly just because you know stallone's out of the picture now but that's not necessarily a bad thing these Creed films have to be able to stand on their own. Eventually, if it's going to continue in some fashion, it's going to have to happen without Stallone. So, I don't know. Again, it's one, I don't know that it's going to be like the five star or the new favorite or anything, but maybe there's at least something there. It's, it's, it's given me a little bit more hope than the superhero stuff, which is just rubbing me up the wrong way in so many ways as a fan of comics i'm not satisfied as a fan of movies i'm not satisfied and even like as a as a i there was a time i had enthusiasm for superhero movies i'm reluctant to say i was a fan but i mean that first iron man really set the marvel cinematic universe on a good path i still consider that unfortunately maybe the best marvel made film which is both you know a compliment but also an indictment of everything that's come since if i'm ranking the marvel films you know my my little hot take i probably put iron man 3 up there i maybe put that above winter soldier which is a popular top pick and has been sort of since it came out the winter soldier it's got some imperfections and it stops short in a few ways that that sort of put me off i also don't find like so many of those marvel films i don't find it like a compelling watch i'm not i'm not compelled to go back and watch it again i don't i don't get a great deal of enjoyment from going back and watching it again and it's just so it's got those big chunks that are so derivative of heat that it's just not that good and again like the directorial signature there's it's just weak it's really weak in that regard and i'm always always disappointed by how v uninteresting visually marvel films are there's no visual signature and yet these are based on comic books which is a visual medium which is full of visual signatures related to the characters and otherwise there is a great tradition of of artistic authorship from writers, yes, but certainly from comic book pencilers. Now, can you make a film look like a John Byrne page or comic book? No, I don't think you can because John Byrne is attempting something like realism. But when I think of other characters, I mean, there is something... There is something to be said for using existing cinematic styles. And I think Captain America, The Winter Soldier is not it's not visually disappointing it's appropriate to the material to the story to the character but like my mind immediately goes to something like daredevil which marvel studios will be doing with daredevil born again um but but netflix did previously and that that's one where like you had the opportunity to do something really interesting visually and they did not at all so many of these things end up looking a little cheap. May uh, they've got that sort of problem with a lot of these digital films that come out now. They're very sort of di dimensionally shallow, flat, overlit. They're not framed in any interesting way. There's no composition that is very striking. It's all meat, meat and potatoes. Seems like the kind of thing that's made so you can watch it on your phone, on your iPad, on your your wristwatch watch it in a plane whatever there's no there's no flair or there's a minimum of flair i would say you know i would say that's a knock because like marvel films they're not bad films strictly speaking they're just they they stop short they stop short they don't honor the material they just do enough barely and now they're not even really honoring the material at all, so I don't know. 
Did I did I start this session by saying we wouldn't talk about superhero movies? I gotta I gotta get a grip, man. Cause I sure as heck don't want to spend all my time dwelling on this stuff. I like it's it's not interesting. It's not good. I'm not happy. I don't enjoy it. So I'm not gonna see it. I'm not gonna buy it. Some of these things I will still give a shot, but some of it I'm just. You know, I don't care. I'm not going to watch it. And there are things we can find that will be interesting. So that's nice. Does anyone remember that we're here playing Dakar Desert Rally? You know, we're in stage four of eight. We're doing okay. I got to get back on track here. So the goal here, if you're just joining me, or if you've forgotten in my meandering discussions about movies, we're, we're clearing out the last of the races that I have that I haven't completed, and I'm hoping that by having completed all of them at least once, we will unlock more of the map, get more tracks, and maybe in doing so, unlock some more free roam territory, do a few more treasure hunts. But, you know, I, I joke that this is what I do now, that I'm just a, a Dakar Desert Rally streamer. I'm only joking, and I do intend... Uh, I do intend, hopefully, to get back to some more games, some other things. I'm just, uh, like I said, I just want to enjoy myself, and, and this is the game I'm enjoying right now. It's been a good purchase. i got a couple of other games that I've got on order so that's something to look forward to and maybe will be things that I get into there's there's all kinds of things I got lots of ideas but I just you know I do what I can we shall see right now we're in a good position to get a good potential podium finish I don't know I don't know if this you know this situation is going to demand that I get first in in a whole heap of these tracks or all of these tracks in order to unlock more i don't know how un unlocking works this game uh from what i've seen i mean it's possible i've overlooked something it seems like it hasn't told me how to unlock anything so we just kind of gotta take it as it comes i should check has my <laughs> yeah we got any really activity in the chat? Doesn't look like it. It's been nice seeing folks coming through, checking out Dakar Desert Rally. I gather there's a bit of a following, and you know that's cool. It's it's cool to see you guys. I'd like to hear from you, uh, particularly over in the YouTube archive. You can see uh, the the full run of what I've done in Dakar Desert Rally, at least on stream. I've done some off. Uh, but people have been checking those out, so that's nice. And uh, if you want to leave a comment, that'd be great. Don't forget to like and subscribe and Five, ring the bell and do all those things. But three, let me know. Uh, let me know how you got into Dakar Desert Rally because um, I'm curious. It seems to be a little bit niche, but within that niche, I'm finding my people. So that's cool. Are you uh, are you a dyed in the wool Dakar fan? Do you watch the annual race? I try to catch it. They do like uh, they do like a, an hour-long daily recap package, so I try to put that on when it's on. It's usually on in the afternoon when when the race happens. Is it always January every year? I, I don't really remember. I just I just uh, take joy when Dakar comes around each year. And I just check check it out, and then from that, I was thinking Dakar would make a great game. Is there a game? Thought about getting Dakar 18, held off, and then they announced this game. So it was sort of a serendipitous kind of thing that I just, you know, I've been doing these, doing these streams, which has been getting me to game a lot more, which is cool. That's one of the good benefits of doing this. Gets me playing some games, so that's fun. And then just out of that, I, it got me curious, and I was curious at the right time. The universe provides. Hmm, you know, you keep, you just keep an ear out, you take an interest in things, and 
strange coincidences will sometimes provide what you need. So that was good. And I'm enjoying this game. Uh, I know it got some mixed reviews, but we've had some good updates from the developers that have added things like the free roam mode, which, which is a real good addition. And I get the impression there have been maybe some tweaks to like stage requirements and, uh, and gameplay. So lots of good signs. If you're a racing fan and you've been, you've been thinking about it, Hopefully, maybe checking this stuff out is helping you reach a conclusion. I think it's worth getting. I'm not really across the state of racing games these days, but I find there aren't that many that are, are grabbing my interest. So this filled the void for me, the void of the, the sort of classic rally game. I'm sure there are rally games still going, but I don't really know a lot about them. And I... Uh, if I've seen them, they maybe haven't quite connected with me. I never connected with the Dirt series. That was something uh, I was at least loosely aware of. I think, for memory, did Dirt come out of the Colin McRae series? Sort of an evolution of that, kind of the way Tony Hawk Pro Skater changed its branding over time and sort of evolved into different things. Hey, we're on the road. I like racing on the road. I got no lights. That's a problem. But yeah, this game uh, this game feels good. I'd like to maybe maybe we'll go back to some of those classic rally games uh, I've talked about of the course of playing this. I think that'd be a nice nice fun thing. Is it going to be like a motorsport kind of year? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm just going to go where the wind blows, where the whim takes me. Hopefully, you'll come along for the ride and maybe encounter some things that you. Remember, enjoy, discover, maybe things you haven't seen, but you, you try it vicariously through what I'm doing. Because I think that's a cool thing when we can kind of discover discover games through, through these kinds of live stream situations. Sometimes it's tough to know if you want to take a punt on a game. Times are tough. We don't all have all the money in the world. Sometimes these games can be a little expensive. You want to want to get a good win. Who's got time for disappointment, man? There's enough disappointment around. Shoutings everywhere. I did. Uh, I did sort of seek out footage of this game before I bought it, and there was very little at the time. There seems to be more now. Uh, it was like. A review, I think the IGN review and things like that, but it was tough to get an impression of this game. I got enough that I knew I was interested. That was good. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, if you're curious, maybe you can check out some of the races I've done. There's a few hours of footage now for you to check out. I'm no pro player, so you got to keep that in mind. There is probably potential to get more out of the game than I'm that I'm doing. I play. Generally, on vehicle defaults and things like that, I haven't I haven't messed much with tuning. I don't know how much is gained from doing that. If you're more inclined toward those things, you might get more out of these games than I have. I haven't even really been trying that many cars. I got the great tip from Lord Lord Wes one one one. So check him out if you're curious. I'm enjoying the game though. Good times. And in just a few short stages we're going to find out if there's more to this game available to me. I know that there is more to the game, I just don't know how to get it. So we're going to find out here tonight. I believe this is the last course of the courses available. There's about a dozen or so I guess. I forget the exact number. I've completed most of them at least once with one vehicle type or another. Some of them I've done with trucks. Some of them I got first, some of them I haven't. So we're going to find out exactly what the requirements are. I'm hoping it just requires you to complete them and then it'll unlock another sequence and then I play those and so on. That would be real good because we like to have new races. I mean, it's sort of funny in a game like this because it's all set in the same 
the same basic environment. You know, it's all it's all located in one place. It's the Dakar Desert Rally. It's all in one country, essentially. So there isn't all that much variation track to track, but it is nice just to have those little changes track to track. So unlocking more tracks would be preferable. We'll see. We'll see. If you've been with me, what do you think about this car? You, you know, you've seen seen me drive it a bit more. I think it's maybe. I don't know. It's a good one. I, I'll say that much. It's good. It steers pretty well. And I'm still I'm performing. So all indications suggest it's a good one. Is this the car that's on? I I mentioned I mentioned a few. A few sessions ago, I was talking about the concept of the hero car and what what the hero car was, and I, I maybe made the sloppy equivalent to uh, to the car that would be on the cover, without really thinking about what is on the cover. Is that red car on the cover, which is on the left of screen? Is that this one? I'm not sure. Is this a Toyota? We got a mirror match going here. This guy's like driving into me, but I'm also driving into him. One kilometer. Danger three. Danger three. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is if this is the car cover Keep or not. Might not two. be. It's a good car though. Keep straight, cap two ninety-two. Danger Ooh. two. One so often when I'm about to overtake, I, I blow it. So. I blow it by pushing too hard. Oh no. Keep left. So that was something I was curious to. I was saying uh, it feels like although this car is very good and it seems to reach similar top speeds as the car I was using, the Red Bull one, I forget what the the name or number or model was, but it seems to reach similar top speeds, but I don't feel like I'm dominating as much as I was with that one. I wonder, is that something to do with changes in the... If you choose a different car, does the, do the other races change? I'm not sure. Uh, if it does change, maybe... Maybe the AI drivers are doing better now. Maybe there's more equivalency. I'm not sure. I also don't know how the difficulty scales in this game, because I did sort of, I did sort of go from having a tougher time to now I'm, I'm getting first. So I'm, I'm doing much better now. So I don't really know how the difficulty scales. I don't know if it's just dependent on the car you choose and how you drive it, or if drivers get more skilled the further we go in the game. I don't know how sport mode affects that versus other modes. As I said earlier, I tried, uh, I did try professional mode and that was uh, interesting. It's a very different experience. It does change the race as well. You're not, you're not in a group with the rolling start. You're, you're sort of starting on your own and I, I feel like it's more like the real Dakar where each car goes out on its own. I could have that wrong, I'm not sure. But uh, the navigational aspect changes quite a lot. And I had... I did okay as long as there was a compass showing me where the next waypoint was. That was that was really what was helping me. But then, when that didn't show up, I was in big trouble. So, I don't know. Maybe i got to work on that. I could work on that. But I'm enjoying sport mode and I'm hoping... I'm hoping any unlock requirements will work with sport mode. It won't force me to go professional or sim. Remember when video games used to do that? You would have to play on hard mode if you want to download stuff or, or get the true true game. Used to be like some games would cut off like at the third level or the fourth level if you played on easy. And if you wanted to see the full game you had to play on normal or hard. I don't hate the concept but you know if you're a bit of a scrub or a kid as I was at the time. You kind of, you, you just want to see your game. That 
Another stage down. Oh, we had more trouble there. That repair probably didn't help. Down to third. How are we doing overall? Still in front. Oh, wow. Big gap, too. Like 19 minutes. Well, we're sitting pretty. Load times seem like they might have improved a little. I don't know if they have. Just gonna step out a sec. I'll be right back. Talking a whole lot of nonsense here tonight in the hell hall. Wasn't sure if I was going to make the full hour, but it looks like I'm, I'm going to make it. How are we doing? Pretty good. These eight stage races usually seem to go just around an hour, so... We're on... Uh, we're on time roughly stage seven of eight Keep it never it business. never feels like an hour which I, I would say is a compliment to the game it's nice that it has these long long races I mean that's the point of difference for Dakar and that's what I want to see so uh, I like it Okay, okay. Let's just take it easy here. Avoid damage at the very least. Uh, let him get away. Let's see if we can catch somebody here. Got a nice little open run here. Catch the waypoint on the edge. Come around. Very good. Only one, one more to go. See if we can get a better result in the last stage. Two kilometers. Prepare to turn left. Every stage is a new opportunity to try to do a little bit better. Try to improve the overall standing. We got a nice little buffer, about 19 Let's minutes. You'd have to do something really wrong to lose that. But you just never know. Two kilometers. Oh, rock. The hierarchy of the Dakar universe is changing. Can't believe that guy rammed me. Very rude. Very, very rude, sir. Left on track. That's something that, that has felt different about this car. It feels like there is not as much breathing room usually. I haven't been able to open up as big a lead. There is always two or three cars really right on me. Make a mistake and they are ready to pounce. So I wonder if that's just an issue of equivalency. Do those cars have good, good comparisons to me? We did see three of us from the same team, possibly the same model. On top of the podium. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I like it. 
Good, good clean overtake. We'll take it. Two kilometers. Prepare for tight left. I like these tracks where I can I can get a good visual of the of the waypoint in advance, so I know where I definitely know where I'm going. I don't even need to hear the co-pilot. I can just get eyes on it, make my own path. You get a lot of confidence from that, which is part of what makes professional mode a lot trickier. You also don't have the waypoints. There is no visual for the waypoint. You you only know it's there once you cross through it. There's no the yellow rings aren't there. There's no um, there's no like distance marker like that. You're just you're driving through nothing. So uh, that's something to get used to. Oh oh oh! We gotta get to the. I still don't like this, that you gotta hit the perfect marker. Oh, where is it? You gotta get, like, within that tiny little circle area where that mark is. I think that's smaller than the waypoints. I really feel like there should be a finish line. I don't know how Dakar does it, I don't remember. I, I could have sworn they had a finish line. Maybe that needs to be fixed in the patch, I don't know. Something to think about. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if the developers check out things like this. So. Ho hopefully, they've enjoyed the enthusiasm that I've had for this. I don't necessarily project. <laughs> I don't project a whole lot of enthusiasm, but rest assured, I'm very enthusiastic about this game. I've been playing it non-stop for at least this month. I did manage to sneak a little bit of Fall Guys in off stream. And I did quite well. <laughs> I was a little surprised. I was the, the very first solo show I did in Fall Guys. And I was runner-up in the final. And if I just had my business together a little bit more, I could have won that first show. I wonder about the matchmaking in Fall Guys, because I haven't played since last year, so it's like a month and a half or more. It might even be close to two months without fall playing Fall Guys. Does that mean that my matchmaking uh, reverts back to something, you know, a little bit more beginner level? Did I get a did I get a gimme to start with? I'm not sure. I'll probably play a bit more Fall Guys sometime on stream. It'd be good, uh, I think. I saw there's like 49, 50 days to go on this season, so I think this season must have been delayed as well, because I could have sworn it would it would be up by now. So maybe they've delayed it. It's been a long, a long Fall Guys season. I feel like that did that start in November? It's been like it's looking like a three monther. Thereabouts. It's quite long quite long but it's kind of good because I I missed a month or two so I've got a chance to get some of those rewards that are still there I don't think I have Ultraman yet I'm probably not gonna get Spongebob I think that's a, a bridge too far we'll see you never know if they do double points toward the end maybe I still like Fall Guys, I think that's a lot of fun, but I would definitely like to see some new tracks, a new season. Two kilometers, danger it's a tricky balance, because you, you need like time, you want, you want it to be there long enough that you can master the levels and have everyone playing at a, a high standard, but at the same time you don't want it to get too stale, you want to introduce Two new things. To turn right. danger three. And generally I think Fall Guys is doing pretty good. I think there's been some tweaks to some of the stages that they have, some of the, some of the challenges. I did notice, it seems like there's some new sound effects. <laughs> it's a little bit, it's a, it's a little bit one-armed bandit. I'm slightly uncomfortable with some of the noises, but in general that's a good game. And of course we gotta get back to Elden Ring, Death Stranding. Hunt down is always lurking in the background. Two. Questions remain about Subnautica. I was 
I get the impression I was just starting to make some serious progress. Somebody was telling me things were going to get nuts, and then I kind of lost my way from some more to go, but I don't know. No promises. No promises. If you want to see it, it's in the archive. You can always leave a, leave a message and just say, hey, do some more of this. This is good. I don't know that it's particularly good. There's lots of games I want to play. Lots of games, new and old. What the hell is going on here? Are we... Did we just phase into the sand? Whoa. Okay, well. Uh, yeah. That was weird. I guess the world didn't load. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna have to repair. What the heck? Fusty! Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's the end. Unbelievable. We got in the top three. Well, we got a third. I gotta think overall, we've probably finished on top. Let's see. How do we look? Looking all muddy and smashed. Let's let's see these guys. Is it bad form that I keep skipping this? It probably is. We should we should see who, who these races are. Hey, Carnal, go back to that. This guy. Is it Tim Coronal? Tim, he, he follows me on Twitter. Shout out to him. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> that's very good. Hey, he came first. You got me, buddy. Get you next time. I, I thought that was very thrilling when he, when he followed me on Twitter. And you can follow me on Twitter, at thellhole. The letter T, the word hellhole. It's on the bottom left of your screen right now. If you just take out the H-E from the, that's what it is. It's capital T, if it matters. Hey, there we are. We're on top. So how'd we do? A good 20-minute win. How about that? That's pretty good. But have we unlocked anything? That's what we're here to find out. Let's sit through this. I like this. Uh, who, who did it? Alexandra Pesci? Or Pesky? Oh my, my lord, these names. Hey, Nani Roma. That's us. I think at some point they're going to have like cu more customization options. So it might be cool. At some point we might be able to make our own team. Design our own car maybe. I don't know. Can you customize your driver even? That might be cool. Interesting. I'm going to take the points because I started to lose points. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, it doesn't look like anything unlocked. Oh, that's disappointing. I mean, you look at, like, look at this. The, don't you, doesn't this imply... You got all this stuff. This kind of implies that there would be tracks or something. I don't know if that's just in the... In the sim mode? I mean, is that is that maybe what everything's going to hinge on? That I get to experience level 25 and then... And then it'll unlock a whole lot? I don't know what unlocks stuff. And I don't get the impression there is any... Is there any indicator? It doesn't seem like it tells you how you can unlock all this. So if it's not just completing those races, I have to think it might be... I mean, it's either going to be you got to get a trophy on all of them, which I guess is coming first. 
or or it's XP. You got to get to 25 XP. So right now I'm on 23. But yeah, as far as I can see, I have completed all of these at least once. But maybe maybe I got to like get firsts on these. Should we sneak one more in? I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go. I mean, it's not going to make much difference, is it? Maybe we should wind it up here. I'll do some of this off stream. We got a nice tight one hour. Let's, yeah, let's call it a night. Thanks for being with me. This has been good. I mean, I like doing these these hour long races. Sharing the experience with you, my friends. Here in the hell hall. What a magical time it's been. What a magical time it will continue to be. Hopefully there will be more games. I'm definitely going to start to drift to other things now. And if you want to be here for all of that, make sure you hit that follow on Twitch. Head over to the YouTube and hit that subscribe. If you're looking for links on Twitch, head to the About section. You'll find Twitter and YouTube links there. If you're on YouTube, head to the description of any video. You'll find links to Twitch and Twitter. And if you're on Twitter, well, usually you'll just find me posting uh, some sort of nonsense and archive of these streams because I usually forget to mention that I'm going live, which is really the thing that I need to do. I gotta get, I gotta get more live viewers, but I, I always forget, and it's just, it's weird, man. It's weird. Can we just accept that? It's a little bit weird. This has been the Hell Hall. There's nothing weird about this. Good game. Having a good time. I will see you guys real soon. We'll talk more about nonsense and we'll have a good time playing games. Adios amigos!